Hi and welcome to PeaceMag TV. In today's WordPress tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at what's new in Slider Revolution 5.21. We're going to take a look at the new add-ons, some of the new features that have been added to this, and we're going to give some of those a little test drive to show you what these new features offer you with your sliders. So let's take a look at all that right now. So we're going to kick this video off by taking a look at the new add-ons that have been added into the new version of Slider Revolution. Now the thing you need to note right from the get-go is to be able to access these add-ons, you need to have a fully licensed version of Slider Revolution installed. So you can't use the one that ships with the theme because that doesn't actually give you a license key. So I'd recommend popping over, picking yourself up a fully licensed copy, and then you'll be able to access all of the extra add-ons that you've got available to you with this latest update. So when we launch Slider Revolution 5.21, you're going to take a look down the left-hand side. You're going to see we've got a new section called Add-ons. When we click on that, that opens up this section where we can check for any new add-ons that have been made available to us. So we'll click that in the top right-hand corner. That will now contact the server and take a look to see what are available to us. And you can see at this point, we've got the whiteboard option, we've got the backup option, and the standard WP gallery. So let's take a look at the whiteboard option and see how we install that. And it's literally just a case of clicking the install this add-on. That's going to go off, connect to the server, download this to our installation of Slider Revolution 5, and then it's going to make it available to us on the actual Slider settings itself. And we can do the same for backups and standard WP gallery. We'll take a look at those later on in a different video where we can concentrate on showing you exactly what those options are. For now, we're going to concentrate on taking a look at the whiteboard and how that's now been set up and configured to be able to work with our sliders. Okay, so once we've downloaded and installed the whiteboard, we now need to just activate it to make it available to us to throughout all our sliders. So we'll just hit activate plugin. That's just going to contact the server again, activate that and make it available so we can start using this in our slides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly jump over to the slider revolution and we're going to create a new slider in there, which we're going to use as the basis for our whiteboard animation. So we're now ready to create our slider. So I'm going to set it to be a default slider. I'm going to give it the name of whiteboard and the same for the alias. I'm going to specify there's going to be a standard slider and I want it to be full width. And the thing we also need to do is now we see that we've got whiteboard as an option on the right hand side. Just expand that and enable that by setting on. And you can see we've got source and we've got a few different options available to us in there which we can customize and tweak. And we'll take a look at those in their own dedicated video when we get a little bit more in-depth in how we can use the whiteboard to create sliders. In this video, I'm just going to give you an overview of the basics, and then we'll take a look at some of the other features that are available in this update. So we've enabled that, so all we need to do now is just hit save, and if at any point we need to come back and make any changes, we can do that uh, quite easily by just switching back to the slider settings. So we now have our new slider created, and you'll see that we've now got an additional option set as add-ons. And if we just select that to expand it, you can see we can specify the add-on we want to work with. So let's just quickly give the slider a color of the background. So we'll just set that solid color, specify this white. And what we're going to do next is we're going to come down and we're going to create a new layer. So we're just going to set a text layer. and I'm just going to give this some text. So that'll do fine. We'll OK that. We'll specify we want the color. We'll just make the font larger. We'll call it 60 pixels. We'll increase the line height. That'll do. So we've got the basics of just a typical layer on this. So what we can do now is if we switch on to add-ons, we just click to enable the whiteboard effect. And then we can quickly tell it exactly what type of effect we want to use. Now, this is context sensitive, so it'll depend upon the type of object you create. If you create shapes, you won't see the right option. You'll just see draw or move and the off option. But when you put text in there, you get the option to have right. So if we just click on that, that will then bring up a series of different options we can use to control how the effect is actually played out. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail with these. Like I say, we'll take a look at this in an in-depth video where we go through and we'll create some uh, several sliders using this effect. But just for now, you can see quickly, you see we've got things like the jitter distance. We've got the offset to jitter for the vertical. So we'll just 
We'll just set some figures in these. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, let's just call that 50%. You can see we get the little red effect underneath will denote exactly where this is coming from. So you can see that this is going to be how the text will jitter up and down inside that red marker area. Then we've got the variation of jitter distances doing the right process. So we can change that and we can say, well, let's try 30 to see what that looks like. We've also then got the angle of hand during the process. So we can say, well, let's just set that to 35. And finally, we've got the variation of angle during the right process. So again, let's just set that to 30. And you can see that what happens afterwards once the animation is completed, you can see we can go to the next layer or we can hide the hand. So we've got some control over what we do there. We can specify whether it's right hand or left hand. And we can just specify then what happens. We've got reset to preset, right quick, right normal, right slow. So let's just try right slow, see what that looks like. You can see that tells that that effect has now been applied. So let's just hit the save and then we'll switch over to the site and we'll take a look at what those quick changes actually look like on the page itself in our slider. I'm just going to refresh the page and we'll see how this actually works. So as you can see, the hand is animated on and writing the effect that we want on there. Once it's finished, it moves off the screen. So pretty cool. So let's just jump back into Slider Revolution and just come back in and take a look at some of the things we can do on you. So we could fine tune this and we could add extra things on there. But for now, we're just going to leave it as it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to choose to add some additional objects in there. So I'm going to add a button in. Uh, I'm not really bothered what the button's like. I just want some additional objects because the new feature that I want to show you is pretty cool. So let's add another one in there. Let's just add some more text. And that'll do that. I'm not really bothered what it says. And we'll just come over and style that so we've got some color to it so we can see it. And we'll just position that anywhere we want. Okay, so as we know, when we come at the bottom, this is our animation panel. So we can control the different animation effects. We've got the background fixed. And then we've got each one of our different layers, the whiteboard effect layer, the button layer, and the third layer we just created now with the text. We've also got some additional new features underneath the actual animation timeline. And that's in the shape of these particular icons. Now, what these allow us to do is it allows us to select the way that we want our layers to align to each other or how each one of those layers will interact. The different ways that we can actually have these set up on screen. So if we click on any one of these, you'll see that we get the option to do things like adjust the start time. So let's just say we'll set that to 20 milliseconds and we'll say keep the end time position so that it doesn't alter the end position. And we'll just hit set. And you can see now that lines everything up the way it does on there. Or we can come through and we can specify we want different spaces. So let's just say we want to have an overlap of two milliseconds and we'll set that. So you can see now they actually adjust accordingly. So these are a great way of quickly setting up the way you want your, your different timeline to animate. I'd highly recommend taking a little bit of time and experimenting with each one of these to see how it actually operates on your timeline. But it's a great time saver for speeding up. Instead of manually adjusting all these things, you can select the layers you want, use the relevant one of these, and you can set the offset and specify exactly how you want the end position to be dealt with. So again, another great new feature in Slider Revolution 5.2. Now, another new feature that's been added to Slider Revolution 5.21 is the ability to have a history. So we can see exactly what we've done and we can undo various different things. So I've gone back now. So I've just got my whiteboard effect on there. And if I scroll down, you see we have change history. And at the moment, we've got no changes because we've done nothing. I've just loaded this in as it is in this particular session with just the text. So let's just quickly create an additional layer. Uh, we'll just come down. We'll add a button in again. Uh, specify a different type of button and I'll reposition that. So I've done two actions. I've created a button and I've repositioned it on the actual stage itself. So if we scroll down now, you can see the change history. If we expand that by clicking the little pop out, you can see those two actions have now been sort of inserted into the history. First action at the top is where we created the button. The second one is where we created the layer, we set the layer position. So let's just go back up and we'll do the same again. Let's just add another layer in there. This time we'll add, oh, we'll just add another button in there for argument's sake. And this time we'll just choose a different one. And again, we'll set the position on it to be a different position. If we scroll down, you can see our history state now has four different actions in it. So I can undo that by using this symbol on the right hand side. And that will take that out. It'll reverse it back from that point. 
So that's a pretty useful thing to have in there. You can see exactly what you've done right through the entire process of creating your slide. And you can undo anything you need to. So again, another great feature that we've got added into Slider Revolution 5.2. And the final thing we're going to take a look at in this overview of the latest version of Slider Revolution 5 is some of the new icons that have been added. So if we come up to Add Layer and we come down to Object, we've got great looking hand-drawn symbols and things that we can use with our whiteboard effect. So all you need to do, you can see we've got a way of filtering all these different objects. If you come at the bottom one for whiteboard, you can see we've now got a massive collection of SVG so they're fully scalable no loss in quality we can change the color on them we can do pretty much anything we want with these and you can just click insert that in resize it position it wherever you want to on there and we can change the color of that and if we want to we can animate that so we can say let's draw that and then we can control how that's drawn on the page itself so once we've tweaked the way that we want this to animate we can simply come down to the timeline and we can adjust it within the entire animation. So obviously if we run it now, we'll have the two of these running almost simultaneously. So all we need to do is grab the SVG layer, move that over so that starts a little bit after the whiteboard effect comes into play. So let's just save that and we'll just jump back into our demonstration site and we'll take a look at that. Now, like I say, I haven't fine-tuned this. This is something I'd want to spend a lot more time on, but it should give you an overview of how cool this actual whiteboard effect is. We refresh the page and we just come back in now to watching the animation. And there we go. So he was very quick at drawing the actual picture itself, but you know, it kind of gives you an idea of exactly how you can use this. I hope this has given you a good introduction to the new features that are available in Slider Revolution 5.2. I hope it has given you a good idea of how you can use the whiteboard effect and how you can integrate that into your workflow. The way that we can work with the history states is also a great addition to the new version of Slider Revolution, as is the ability to fine tune the actual structure of our animation using the auto time select layers at the bottom. So all in all, we've got a pretty great update to what is already a fantastic slider piece of software to work with WordPress. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all the new additions to our channel. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we've got covered, please pop those in the comments section below. We read everything you post and we try to answer every question asked. Well, until next time, take care.